YouTube. I'm Brian. Today we're going to talk about setting up a local Python-based data science environment on your machine. We're going to start with going over a few of the things that you need. We're going to talk about some decisions you'll need to make along the way. And then we're going to wrap it up by talking about some add-ons that you might want to have that aren't technically necessary, but they're things that you're going to want to learn how to use uh, if you're going to be doing data science in general. Um, and it's something that will help make your life a lot easier when you make mistakes, which inevitably, inevitably you will. Ironic that I made a mistake saying inevitably when I was talking about mistakes. Anyway, uh, the first thing that we're going to do is talk about getting everything set up and installed on your machine. Now again, this is presuming a local install. If you're doing AWS, that's completely different um, and in no way related to what I'm talking about now. We'll talk about that at some other point um, on some other video. I'm assuming here that, actually I'm making no assumptions about um, where you are in your data science career. It could be that you have been doing data science for many years and you've been using some other platform, for example R, and now you're making the transition to Python and you want to know how the things that you learn in R translate or the things that you use in R translate. Um, it could be that you're at the very beginning of your data science career and you want to start off using Python. So again, no assumptions about what you've done really before. Uh, later on in these videos, I will be able to talk about how things uh, work in R uh, and other packages, uh, even things like SPSS and Stata, and how they translate to Python and using Python for data science. But for now, we're going to keep it simple um, and stick specifically with setting up the local environment. Right out of the box, I'm going to tell you that this is going to be pretty easy. And there's one thing that really makes it easy for us. You see here that I've got a couple of web pages pulled up and I've got uh, the python.org website pulled up and you can go here and you can download Python if you want to and you can sort of piecemeal the things together that you need. But the best way to go about this is to go to the continuum.io website and download Anaconda. Anaconda is a package manager for Python. It also has some um, uh, package management for R uh, but if you're using R, you're probably most familiar with CRAN, and so you're probably sort of embedded in that, and that's probably how uh, you're most familiar working. So coming from R myself, uh, when I first was exposed to Anaconda, I wasn't really impressed. Once I started using Python more and saw how difficult it could be to manage environments and to keep um, and to install things, to install modules, uh, Anaconda, at least for the initial setup, is essentially, uh, in my mind, a must-have now. It makes things so much easier just because you don't have to deal with uh, some of the installation problems that you can have when you get to Python. Uh, I still don't necessarily use it that much for the actual package management. Uh, I use pip for package management when I'm doing Python stuff, but just for this basic initial setup, the Anaconda uh, distribution is, is the way to go. It's the easiest thing to do. It's free. Uh, there are some other distributions out there that are not free that you could use, but Anaconda for simplicity and cost of being free is the best way to go. So what I'm going to recommend you do before you do anything else is go to uh, continuum.io and download Anaconda. And that's going to be straightforward. You're going to click on download Anaconda and it's going to take you to a page where you can get whatever flavor you want. It's going to be a simple install. It's either going to be a binary for Windows and for uh, there's actually one for Linux as well. Um, so it's a very straightforward, uh, a fairly straightforward install process. That's not going to give you any trouble. Uh, also, uh, as I've mentioned a little bit, I've got written up here on the screen just to elaborate on that. Continuum Analytics is to Python what R Studio or Revolution Analytics is to R. So if you're familiar with uh, what CRAN or RStudio or Revolution Analytics has done to develop R and to make it into uh, something that uh, the average user can work with, then you'll, be f you'll have an idea of what Continuum Analytics is trying to do. So when you install a version from Continuum IO, you still need to initially pick whether you want to do Python 2.7 or Python 3. Uh, when we start talking about managing an environment, you'll see that this initial decision isn't really that big of a deal. Um, but you will need to pick, just for downloading purposes, which version you want to go with. Um, so just a, my advice on that, if you are going to be using Python in an environment that you know is already set up for 2.7, then go with 2.7. 
if you because you may have uh, dependencies like if you're working with 2.7 for example uh, at your or in your office and everyone's on 2.7 then you know, it's gonna be a hard road to hoe if you try to do Python 3 there aren't a lot of differences but there are nuances enough that it can be very frustrating if you try to get um, Python 3 if you try to develop in Python 3 and then convert to 2.7 again the conversion is not really that hard uh, but there are things like pickles don't translate between Python 2.7 and Python 3. Yeah, I learned that the hard way. Um, and so if you have a need, uh, an, an employer wants you to work in 2.7, or if you know there's legacy code that's already written in 2.7 that you're going to be adding to, then you want to start off with 2.7, obviously. Outside of some need like that, start off in Python 3. You're going to be future-proofing your work, and you're going to be learning you know, the, the current version of the language. So when you install Anaconda, you're going to get a lot of stuff. And that's exactly what you want. You want to have a lot, a lot of installs to happen as part of this one simple click. Some of the things that you're going to get that are going to be crucial for the data science work that you're going to be doing are scikit-learn, NumPy, or NumP, and Pandas. Scikit-learn is going to be uh, the repository for most of the machine learning algorithms that you're going to be using. NumPy is the repository for a lot of the backend mathematical calculations that you're going to that are going to underlie those uh, machine learning algorithms. And then Pandas is the data management, data munging uh, facility that you're going to use. And again, you can go, and they each have their own individual websites, and you can learn more about them there and what they're going to offer to you as you get into this and of course we'll be going over them in more detail and uh, a lot more detail as we go on with these videos but you don't have to install these individually at all you're going to download Anaconda, you're going to install Anaconda, it's going to throw those things all together for you now it's unlikely that you'll have any problems with the Anaconda install but there's a simple thing that we can do to check so open up whichever command line interface you prefer. So if you're on Windows, open up a command window. If you're on Linux or Mac OS, open up a terminal. Type in Python, and we should see Python open, and we'll see an Anaconda brand on it to know that we're actually using the Anaconda installation instead of some other version. And then we're going to simply type import scikit-learn, import numpy, import pandas, and if that executes fine, then we're going to assume for now that we've got a good installation and we're going to move forward. So that one click with Anaconda is going to get you pretty far. Now there are a few things that you might want to install now while you're getting things set up uh, so that you have them when you need them and when you actually start doing your work. First is Git. If you're not familiar with Git, it's a version control system. It works with GitHub so that you can store things online and it's essentially going to help you make sure that um, well, when you use it in a shared environment, it's going to help you make sure that there aren't conflicts with multiple people developing pieces of code at the same time. When you use it as an individual, it's going to give you uh, some confidence that if you're working on an app or you're working on an analysis and you want to take a little diversion to see how something else works, then you can come back to your main code without a lot of trouble. Uh, if you take that diversion and decide that you've royally screwed things up, uh, it's easy to trash it and go back to the working code. Or if you take that diversion and decide that this is great, I want to merge this into my main branch of code, then it makes that simple as well. So as I mentioned, uh, Git interfaces with GitHub, no surprise there. Um, it also interfaces with Bitbucket. These are both online places to store your Git repositories. Uh, and so you'll really want to have either a GitHub account or a Bitbucket account so that you can post your work and you'll not only will you be able to access it from anywhere as long as you have an internet connection but you may also want to share it and get feedback if you're developing open source software or, or open source analytics then you want to have uh, you'll have the ability to get feedback and pull requests uh, that for code that you can enter uh, integrate into your code source tree is a great repository manager that works with Git, GitHub, Bit, Bitbucket. Uh, it's a GUI that makes managing your changes 
a lot easier than having to use the command line. Command line is necessary for some things, and it's not too bad once you get the feel of it, but it's also really great to be able to have a visual interface that you can use. So that's pretty much it. We've kept it pretty short. Um, again, the main thing that you want to take from this is download the Anaconda package manager, install that. You'll get everything that you need to get up and running. Uh, then you should also go and install these optional things if you want to be ready for some of the more advanced stuff that will be coming down the pike. And if you, uh, you know, if you've already been doing data science, you're probably very familiar with Git. Um, so it's not news to go install that. But if you're just starting out your data science career, then those, uh, then, then version control is something that you want to become really familiar with. So after you've done that little bit to get everything installed, the next video we're going to talk about managing develop environment, developing development <laughs> environments. This is something that's uh, also important to learn early on because it's a good habit to get into and it will save you some troubles down the road. So with that said, have a great night or afternoon or morning, whatever it is in your part of the world, and we'll talk next time.